So today I'm going to be making some changes to the Ethernet module that I wrote in the last video. In my last video, I said that there's a problem where if the FIFO is full mid packet, then the data will be corrupted. And I don't want to do that. I'm going to change my FIFO writing mechanism to detect if there's enough space in the FIFO for that packet at the start of that packet. There's an assumption that I know how long the packet is before I start. And that's not always the case with Axie Stream. You don't really always know. So in my case, the packet length is fixed. And so what I'm going to do is I'm going to make a last signal for my packet. Off of my last signal, I'm going to create a first. I like making a first sometimes to signify the first data beat of a packet. That's useful for triggering other logic that I need to do at the beginning of the packet. So I'm going to create a first signal off of this last, and this is how I'll do it. So I've created a first. So I'm using the first as a flag that is high during reset. The first is asserted because the first sample after a reset is the first sample. The first valid and ready after that the asserted because it's not the first anymore. And then if the last goes by, then reasserted because that's now the end of the packet and the start of the next one. And this is really useful for like signaling and triggering other things that are going to start after this. And I'm going to be using this in my packet checker because how my packet checker is going to work is on the first, it's going to look at how much space is in my FIFO and it's going to decide at that point if it should put that packet into the FIFO or not. So this first signal is going to be used to trigger that decision making process. So I'm going to write that decision breaking process now. When the start of a packet comes along and I have to decide whether I can put that packet into the FIFO or not, I need some information. The, the main information I need is is there space in the FIFO for this packet? So I take a look at the FIFO count, which is how many words are in the FIFO currently, and I check if that is less than the depth less one for packet. So basically, there's space on top for another packet. And that's this flag that I've made here. So here's my decision made. My packet start is valid when Axie is valid and ready, obviously, and it's the first sample and the FIFO has space. If it's a first sample of the transmission and on that data beat there's space in the FIFO, I'm like, cool, I can now put this in the FIFO. But now I need to remember my decision because I have to put the entire packet into the FIFO. So I need a register to remember that this is a cool packet for the entire duration. So I'm going to make a register to do that. So this is my packet valid signal. So during reset, the signal is not valid. And then if the start is valid, then remember that the start is valid by setting the packet valid high for the whole duration. If the packet was valid, so this was a valid packet and it's valid and ready and last. So now this is the last data beat of a valid packet, then end the validity, end the validity of the packet. So now we deassert the signal, be like, cool, we're done, it's in the FIFO, all is well. And so this way I can look at how much space is in the FIFO, make a decision about whether this packet is destined for the FIFO, and remember that decision for the entire duration of the transmission. And I need to change my write enable to take into account all of these things. Okay, here we go. So now my new FIFO write enable has originally had valid and ready here. And so now I'm going to put in my new FIFO write enable. There we go. So this new FIFO write enable has valid and ready, which are the same signals that we used before, but it also has packet start valid or packet valid. So the start valid is for the first word of the packet and the packet valid is for the rest of the packet. So when we all them together, we get either the start is valid or the whole thing is valid. That all gets all together and it with our valid and readies. And that's our new write enable. And that is going to allow us to not have a FIFO overflow issue. So we will be able to transmit packets at a much higher rate without having to worry about them overflowing. What we can see here is this is the packet that filled up that top section of the FIFO. At this point in time, the FIFO has space. And then I remember that the FIFO has space 
And so I receive that packet, even though midway, it doesn't have space anymore. So it has space for that packet, but no more. And I'm driving valid, which I probably shouldn't be driving valid. I shouldn't be deasserting valid there. That is a breach of Axie stream protocol. But anyway, I'm going to ignore that for now. We both know that it's fine. So basically nothing is happening. No writing. If I go to my write enable, which is what we care about. Where's my write enable? There it is. So there's write enable is not being driven. And then over here, we have a transmit out where, in fact, this whole time we're transmitting. It's just, we're just transmitting around in circles as much as we possibly can because we've got so much stuff. So we're just carrying on transmitting until FIFO has space. So then we drop the FIFO level down. See, so then FIFO has space here. And then at this point, a new sample comes along and we can say, okay, I have space now. And so we should never get to FIFO full. So you see here, FIFO is never being full. This way now I can transmit packets and not drop mid packets. So there'll be discontinuities between the packets if the FIFO gets full, but it's not going to have a discontinuity in the middle of the packet. And that's only, this is like line rate. This is like above line rate. If you're transmitting, you're just piling stuff into the FIFO as much as you can. This is going to make sure that the whole Axie transmission is preserved as a packet um, instead of just like, oh, sorry, I'm going to toss those samples midstream because we don't want that. So yay for that working. So let's test it in hardware. I've, so I've made this packet max 50 times a second, which is still pretty slow. So we shouldn't see any discontinuities in the packets. So I'm just going to plug this in. Here we go and program it. Program device. Here we go. So that's a thousand packets in 20 seconds. That's 50 packets a second. Yeah, that is expected. And then if we look at this, we can see 04, 06, 01, 50, FE, FF. So it looks like it's counting upwards. So now if we run my Python script, I have to run it as root because I don't know how to not run it as root. Python 3, received a pi. So now it will get a batch of a thousand and it will check that they're all contiguous. There we go. All values are strictly increasing by one each time. So I want to do this again, but this time I want to make it break. <laughs> so I'm going to go to my this number, make it 2000. That should be more than line rate because my calculation didn't include the header. So we should be seeing discontinuities in general. <sighs> okay, done. I'm going to program device. Yes, thank you. Okay, so now if we make a new continue without saving, okay, we're just going to stop it before it gets too slow because <laughs> 65,000 packets in two seconds. Okay, so if we look at, I'm just going to check it visually. There we skipped. So this packet ends in 1B780FF and this starts with 1B782. Uh, so there's an example of it. See, 8082. There we go. So now we can see when I do receive the pi or not strictly increasing by one each time. So now it's dropping in between packets. <sighs> okay, I need to I need to call it a day. <laughs> so. Yeah, this was my modifications to my Ethernet interface and I hope they were helpful and all of this code is in GitHub and I'll see you next time.